This is the Sugar Beet Report, bringing you the latest information from NDSU throughout the sugar beet growing season. We estimate approximately 240,000 acres, or 38% of the sugar beet crop in Minnesota and North Dakota, has been planted. Those that will be planting in the next 7 to 10 days will be planting at the time when water hemp begins to germinate and emerge. That means tillage to prepare soil for sugar beet will also stimulate development of water hemp. So today we're discussing weed strategy with Tom Peters, NDSU and University of Minnesota Extension sugar beet agronomist. Tom, why is there so much emphasis on kochia and kochia control in 2023? I think there's a couple of reasons, Bruce. If we look back at the last two crops, our 21 and 22 crop, we've planted late or it's been dry after planting, and quite frankly, our wheat hasn't done a very good job of competing with kochia. And for sugar beet growers, what we do in small grains, how we control kochia in small grains really dictates how we control kochia in sugar beets. Second, you know, we have more strip tillage. So I am a fan of strip tillage. But strip tillage means that we're doing less tillage. Half of the area is not tilled at all. And I think that's leading to more weeds. And then finally, we just have more glyphosate-resistant kochia now. The trend is increasing. A news release states spinade herbicide is approved in North Dakota and Minnesota for use under a 24C special local needs label. The news release makes reference to kochia. Tell us about spinade and how you intend to use it. So sugar beet growers are familiar with spinade or the previous name, which was Baitanol. So Baitanol was a herbicide that was approved in sugar beets in the 70s and until 1981, and it was primarily for kochia control in sugar beets. So Baitanol, or Spinade, as we're calling it in 2023, is a Photosystems II inhibitor. It's most effective on small weeds. So in sugar beets, what we'll be doing is tank mixing spinade with ethafumazate alone, or we'll be tank mixing spinade, ethafumazate, and glyphosate. Is it possible kochia will emerge before sugar beet? So I'm really concerned about late planting, Bruce. And one of the concerns is, is our weeds come up at the same time as our crops. And I think that's especially the case for kochia. So it's possible that a producer will till the field plant and the first thing he'll see in his fields are kochia. I would like to get that small kochia before our sugar baits germinate and emerge. And one way to do that is to use Paraquat. I think everybody is familiar with Paraquat. What we're going to do is use Paraquat to control kochia, but it's really, really critical that there's no signs of sugar beet emergence in fields. And I would highly recommend that our growers visit with their agriculturalists before they plan to use that treatment. Lastly, Tom, have you seen any water hemp yet? A lot of the rules with kochia also apply with water hemp. It's that time on the calendar when we're going to see water hemp. I personally haven't yet, Bruce, but it's going to be out there as well. So the key is, is we're going to have to put our pre-emergence products on because the water hemp is going to germinate and emerge at the same time of our sugar beets. Thanks, Tom. Our guest has been Tom Peters, NDSU and University of Minnesota Extension Sugar Beet Agronomist. This is the Sugar Beet Report, bringing you the latest information from NDSU throughout the sugar beet growing season.